Welcome to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Nilos and this is another short tutorial in my tutorial series on how to become better at Oxygen Not Included. This is specifically aimed towards maybe more beginners, intermediate levels, and also uh, taking a look at this. This is from the new Spaced Out expansion. So hope you were, hope you are enjoying that as well, or are you even considering playing it? Now this is my base coming over from my Twitch series. So if you want to hang out and see this base in action, then come on over to Twitch. And uh, you know, if there is an interest, I might start something on YouTube here as well, if there's an interest. So this episode is all about the layout of your base. I didn't even put much thought into it because it came natural to me to build it this way, but uh, I've had a lot of good comments and just uh, yeah, during my live streams about how neat this was and how this was really the only way to do it. And uh, yeah, so I thought it might be a good idea to just talk about how, why, when, what, what I do and why I do what I do here. This is basically very analogous to my city block setup in Factorio. So uh, let's take a look at it. The basic idea is that as you can see here, there are columns and there are buildings in between, uh, rooms in between. They are all very much the same size and with the exception of these, and there's also a reason for that. Let's start by looking at your very first room because that's going to be your first conundrum here. I'm actually, by the way, I'm in screenshot mode right now, so you don't see the overlay. I just think it looks neater when, when just looking at the base. This is you enter and exit it by Alt S. I wish this was a, just a less hidden function. So <clears throat> you will always start with this in your beginning of base, your portal. And my recommendation is you build your first room around it. And this one gives off light. And you are going to light makes things go faster. So where's my light overlay? There's a light overlay. That one is a light overlay. It gives off a bit of light. And working on a, uh, on a machine in the light is actually making it faster. <clears throat> Someone forgot to put that there, but... You know, the idea is good. So keep those around, build your science next to it. Uh, one of the things that you might be considering is like, okay, what about if there are some plants nearby? What about if there's uh, some water nearby? Well, my thought is that in your 100 cycles in, this is currently 160 cycles in. If when your 100 cycles in, the water will be gone, the plants will be moved, everything will be there. But what will still be there is the structures you build from the beginning because very rarely do you just make a, a fundamental restructuring of base and move it one tile. That would be crazy, right? Moving your base one tile. So what you, you have to think about the long term. And if you build this, then you have a very good structure and this will be the center of your base and you can navigate towards what's above, below, and to the sides of this. Room size. Well, all of these rooms, and this is a new little feature here that uh, when you drag, you actually see the size of it. Let's look at this. Each room here is 16 by four tiles. Four tiles high is, in my opinion, the perfect height. They can they can remove all of this by standing on the floor. They cannot from here build this one. So if you go all the way up, uh, okay, I don't have a lot of uh, things left. So for example, you can see here, they can remove everything in here, but they can't build the wall, the top here. If you make it three high, then they can, but then there's a lot of other things that doesn't work. You can argue that there's a, Okay, we are having a lot of issues on this one. We're just uh, we're just gonna ignore that. Hope you survive. Uh, you can argue that there's a lot of wasted space here, and also for our farms, there's a lot of wasted space. I don't care because uh, it is much more important for me to have a structure that is sustainable, and then that means you, I mean I've never had a base where I've run out of space. You can see how much space I have left on this one, and uh, I, I don't think that I'll use all of it. So space is something you have plenty of. Now, why do I make these rooms 64 tiles? 64 tiles is perfect for many of the rooms. If you look at the room overlay, you can see stuff like the washroom can be at maximum 64 tiles, barracks, maximum 64 tiles, mess hall, maximum 64 tiles, massage clinic, 64 tiles. Hospital can be bigger, but you don't really need a lot of stuff in there. And so those are the ones that work on a 64 tile. Every room can be built on 64 tiles. So also stuff like ranches and farms can also be built on 64 tiles. However, when it comes to 64 tiles, there is a, there's a bit of, you can see here, this one is 64 tiles and that allows uh, not that many critters, five critters maybe. And you generally want one less critter than what you have. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, six tiles is uh, sixty tiles is five critters. So you can actually only have four in here. And on top of that, you see all of this infrastructure takes four tiles, and it's kind of a bad use of space. So for that reason, I make one of these columns larger. These columns are now. 96 tiles, 24 by 4, and those are primarily used for farms and for uh, for ranches. So in this case, you can see ranches. It only takes this much space. When it's 96, you can have 8 critters in there. And 8 critters, that means you can actually have 7. So you can see that it's a much more efficient way. This one, for example, is 7 critters. And it's much more efficient use of space because that's lots of it that's used for sort of the overhead on establishing it as a ranch. Uh, don't mind the heating thing, that was a temporary setup. But that means, for example, this column will be for ranches and farms, but every other one, every other column will be for basically everything else. Everything else will be on a 64 tiles, and when you need to build stuff, it's really easy and convenient to build things on 64 tiles. So let's talk about the layout of between the rooms. So this is uh, kind of uh, the essence of it. When you have a room, it is always ended with doors, I want to, unless I need to keep the air away <laughs> out of it, then I always make it with two pneumatic doors. And I get a lot of questions, why two pneumatic doors? And pneumatic doors cost, let's just go and see, they cost 100 each. So this cost 200 to build this one. And it gives a good airflow. You want to get as much airflow as possible in this space because you're going to have a big base and you want things to flow around. So if you wanted to instead make it with airflow tiles, which is later tech, then you would have to use 200 to get the same effect. So you can of course build it with just with just normal walls, but then you will always have like some some gases sort of stuck in here up at the top. Uh, I also oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes build airflow tiles here again to get more flow and the fact that I'm building all of the things aligned that means it's much easier for the air to go between multiple levels and spread out. Now this the actual interplay here in the middle we have a ladder then we have two tiles on the side I don't build the ladder next to my ledges here yeah ledges landing places whatever we want to call it but I need to have a ledge, a ledge here I see way too many people just build it build the room the door and then the ladder I really like this for two reasons. It this landing pad, landing space uh, is is serves two purposes. As you can see here, it's either going to be a deodorizer, so that we will have those sort of randomly located, so to clean up the air, especially in uh, spaced out, because it is it's a lot of polluted oxygen running around. You are basically only producing polluted oxygen, so that's the you need to clean it by having. And you can already see here that I'm not very good at cleaning it actually. And then the rest of it will be just for sculptures. The reason for the sculpture is you can see here, we can see how much traffic there is out here. And if I make the place they spend a lot of time look nice, and let me just go there, then they're actually spending a lot of time just in an area that is nice. And you can see that there's also a lot of minus, minus things in here. Uh, actually, there isn't a lot of minus. Virtuous outfit, what about you? Uh, these are now heavy, no, these are decorators, so they don't cost anything. Ladders are a bit of a negative, that's not much, but and then we have all of these radiating nice things. So when you look at the base going a bit out, you can see that the places they spend the most time should be the ones that look the best. So for example, this one I only have on one side, and you can see it's not quite enough to radiate in here. It's the minor thing, uh, I don't, unfortunately, unfortunately, the decor doesn't really mean a lot. But you know, it's, um, it's a... Uh, it's nice to have it as an option. It also means that some places you may need to do stuff like put a filter or something like this, like this, for whatever reason, and there's room for it. So you don't get, again, it's about planning with enough room. And you can see here that we've already established that I have my ladder, I have a fire pole on the one side, and the other side will be reserved for the tubes at the very late game, so that I can actually have tubes going up and down quite easily and already have built-in room for it. This one is also, this column is also great for airflow. So again, I'm very focused on the airflow in my base. And as you can see on, now nah, that's not a good overlay. Let's do this one. This is my oxygen. The reason why it's so flickering is because a lot of it is still polluted oxygen. And that's something I'd like to do something about because 
yeah, it, it doesn't look good. Like we have low oxygen here and high oxygen here. This part is not flowing as much because I don't have those connections in between. So that's uh, that's one, one more thing that I need to do. Let's also just address some of the disadvantages about this layout because of course there are disadvantages. There's always a trade-off between this. One of the things is that um, when you build, when you start building upwards, we don't have a lot of things, but when you build here, then every time you build something, it's gonna fall all the way down to the bottom. And that means at the bottom here, that's where a lot of things will accrue. And that means your dupes, when they need to go down and pick something up, you can see someone coming down here and picking it up. It's a long way to go sometimes to pick them stuff up if, instead of they fall down where you need it. That's one of the things. Also, the fact that we are hollowing out the uh, asteroid as we are here, it, it takes a lot of dupe power, so you need a lot more dupes. They will also have long distances. You can see that they're about over here cleaning it up. And it's just one of those things where, um, especially in the beginning, you're spending a lot of time on designing things. So you want to have the dupes do something while you're designing. And that something is could just as well be just mine it out. When I, if I have some idle dupes, then I just take an area and just hollow it out. So I haven't just hollowed out this one, particularly because of the chlorine, but we'll get to that. I'll just hollow it out, uh, the base, and just establish it. Once that's done, then we can do the cleanup. And then uh, it'll just gradually be a nice base. I don't have to come over here but it's, it's available if I need to build something. For example, if I need to build a power plant, then I might say, all right, you know, this place over here might be good. I have some space for it. Or I meet and it makes new farms, then I have space for it. So I have the space. I don't have to dig it out if I need something suddenly. I needed a massage clinic and I could just stamp it down here immediately because it was easy to do. Disadvantages, another thing is that a hollowed out, hollowed out uh, asteroid like this is, uh, yeah, needs more dupes, but it also stores more oxygen. The amount of oxygen stored in this area is obviously a lot more than if the base was smaller. Uh, it also means that since I'm focusing so much on, on the airflow, if you start having chlorine or natural gas or other nasty gases just floating around, they will sort of be at sort of some middle tier here and it's kind of difficult to get it out. So try to manage your gases. This is what I've done here, like popping a little chlorine location and then cleaning it out before the chlorine just is allowed to spread out to the entire base. So you have to manage where your gas, your gases uh, spread out so you don't sort of have, have that layer here. Then the last part is uh, if we use this as our origin, it's about how do we place things and uh, oops, that's sorry, that's me scrolling on my notes. For some reason it scrolled in game while I'm scrolling out there. That's kind of okay. Anyway, so when you build, you have now lots of space like this, like I have, and you need to position your locations. This is also in the beginning. When you start building, just having a small area, where are you going to build the various locations? Well, there are some things that should be built above this location and some things that should be built below this location. The first thing, let's talk about the stuff that needs to go above. That's very, that's pretty much, oxygen is one of the lighter gases, so it flows to the top. And therefore you want things that have a lot of dupe activity or dupe time to be above. This is what you can see here. I have all of my beds, bedrooms are above. I have uh, the eating, I have toilets, I have the cooking, close at least. So those are sort of centered around here, but primarily above the location because that's where oxygen will tend to go. On what goes below, that's primarily two things. Things that are the gravity has a big impact on, and that means any liquids. Liquids, just build your liquid reservoirs further down. This is a bit close, but I'm uh, keeping it. It's also a very small location, but just keeping it down because eventually, well, whenever you accidentally pop some some liquids somewhere, then it will flow to the bottom of the of the map, and that's, uh, that's as good as place as any to, to keep it there. So keep those sort of further down. Another thing that you want to keep down is if you have something that is producing a lot of carbon dioxide, such as coal plants or petroleum plants or anything like that, you keep it down so that because you, it carbon dioxide is going to fall to the bottom, but even though it falls to the bottom, you might want to produce it at the bottom anyway. So it sort of stays there. Things that you, uh, you just want to build, not necessarily 
above or below, but just very far away from your origin is things that produce a lot of heat. So what produces a lot of heat? Let's look at this. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I put a lot of heat, hot water in here. The, um, the metal refinery, the kiln, those are very heat intensive. Battery farms, I have that all the way up here. They are also producing a lot of heat. Actually, they're not, not in, well, they are, but this is a very, very cold biome, so not really a problem. Transformers also, just make those things far away from your center of the base so you don't accidentally heat up and un unintentionally heat up your base. Uh, especially the farms, the dupes there, it's kind of resistant, but it, primarily your ranches and your, uh, your farms that are affected by heat. So that's basically the things that you want to keep away. So basically that's uh, how I would propose to build a base. Let me just go over to the overlay, hollow it out, start planning immediately, start adhering to the structure. And I know that you will see that things don't fit, like geysers don't fit. And in this case, well, this is really unfortunate. It was just on my, on my ladder, but otherwise if things are here, well, that's fortunate. And we also have another one up here. That's just slightly off. I don't really care if it's slightly off because I just reserved two locations for it. Uh, down here as well. They're not really gonna fit, but then I just reserve some more space around it I have enough space because of, I'm doing it this way So there you have it. That's how I built city blocks in my bases. This is pr pretty much how I always do it and uh, even if we look at the second Little colony here. This is part of against the spaced out You can see that I'm already starting to establish this on this uh, here, even though it's a very small base and a very, very modest setup, I'm just starting to structure things according to my city block pattern or whatever we want to call it. I'm just going to city block because we, we, if you are anywhere familiar with what I do, then you are familiar with city blocks. So I hope you have enjoyed this short tutorial and that you want to check out more of the tutorials for Oxygen Not Included. It is my intention to start being, start releasing more consistent tutorials. So be sure to hit the like button share it with anyone you who might find it useful uh, let me know in the comment section below if you uh, if there's something if there's something else you want me to do a tutorial on i'd be happy to uh, to do more just uh, need the ideas not everything is logical to me that what you might need a tutorial on so thank you very much and i hope to see you in the next episode until then take care and stay effective